Uh, hi, good morning and good evening, everyone. Welcome to DEF CON 2023. Today, I'll walk you through on the topic creating FPGA SOC system with Lattice Propel Builder and SDK. Okay, so to begin with, I'm Louis from Lattice P9 Technical Support Team. I have over 15 years of experience in supporting the FPGA development and customer engagement. My primary expertise area covers from the embedded soft IPs, RISC 5 soft processor, and Ethernet system debug. So before we start, I'll encourage all the audience to drop your question in the Q&A widget throughout the whole presentation, in which I'll address by the end of the session. In Lattice, we provide you with a very comprehensive design tools ecosystem. As you can see from the slide over here, so the Lattice IP server, it comprises of various IP suite from different software tools. We have the Propel, Radiant, Diamond, and it's pre-installed or downloadable from the online server as well. In Lattice, we provide you with a very comprehensive design tool ecosystem. As you can see from the diagram over in this slide, the Lattice IP server comprises of various IP suite from different software tools. So it has the Propel, Radiant, Diamond tools, and it's pre-installed or downloadable from the online server. As for the embedded system development tools, we provide, provide you with the Propel development suite where the Lattice Propel Builder as the GUI-based hardware SOC system integration tools, whereas the Propel SDK is used as the software development IDE. And lastly, we have the FPGA device implementation tools, which is the Radian and the Diamond design. This software is mainly used for the FPGA design implementation. So the latest SOC design flow starts with the SOC project creation. This can be done in either the Propel SDK or the Propel Builder. You can create the SOC project in Propel SDK and it gives you the advantage of managing both the hardware and the software project in a single IDE environment. But it doesn't stop you from just create the project in the Propel Propel SDK, you can also choose to create it in the Propel Builder. It gives you the flexibility of doing sort both. You can launch your Propel Builder to generate an SOC system hardware design after that. The Lattice IP server provides you with an extensive IP core support that can be integrated into the project as needed. After this, the SOC system is further integrated into the Radiant FPGA project for you to constrain, assign pin, synthesize it, and also build the hardware bitstream. In parallel, you can launch the Propel SDK to leverage the SOC hardware handoff file to develop the software with the Eclipse IDE and generate the download the software executable file to run and debug the software on your target device. Today's agenda, I'll cover the complete design flow of the SOC project from creation to running the bitstream on the physical board with an actual demo. On the first, I'll cover how to create the SOC design project first. Okay, like I mentioned just now, you can actually create the SOC project from both the Propel Builder or the SDK. Today's demo, the flow will cover and focus more on the Propel SDK because I wanted to show you how you use the advantage of the Propel SDK to manage both the hardware and the software project in a single IDE. To start launching a Pro Lattice Propel SDK, first choose a workspace for your SOC project, then launch the Propel SDK. Next, the Eclipse will launch with the workspace path and store the metadata setting for your project. The next launch with the same workspace will bring up the existing created project file as well. Then, in the Project Explorer, choose Create a new Lattice SOC Design Project. From there, the Create SOC Project GUI will appear, and you should enter the details based on your device or your dev kit settings. In the GUI, enter your project and specify the location. Then, choose your device packages and the type of the processor based on your preference or supported block. You can leave the board template as default if your choice of board template is not supported. And lastly, choose the software design template Hello World, then click Finish. Okay. 
So the next session, I'll share how to easily create the SOC system by using the Propel Builder. You can launch the Propel Builder from the Propel SDK. There's a button in the taskbar where you can actually launch the Propel Builder from the Project Explorer. The Propel Builder environment is a graphic user interface which you can view physical connection for each design block. The schematic view in the Propel Builder shows the overall block diagram connectivity. As you can see in here, the hardware template that we use automatically create a simple RISC V SOC system comprised of the basic peripherals such as the RISC V MC CPU, and then we have the system memory, GPIO, and the UR. Interconnect wise is automatically inserted to translate between the AHP light and the APB signal from different peripherals in here. In the IP catalog, it contains IP on local and IP from server. The IP on local consists of pre-installed basic IP core in the Propel Builder, while the IP on server provide you with various additional IP and new updated IP from the latest IP server, which you can download and install in your local drive. All installed and compatible IP will be available in IP on local. Then you can use the glue logic to add combination logic custom IP or other function to your SOC system. In the IP catalog, you can view the corresponding user guide by clicking on the IP yourself. This feature is very convenient for you to browse the relative user guide without the need to search online. In the Propel Builder module, or the Propel IP block wizard, right? You can actually view and update the desired compiler in the Propel Builder by double clicking on it. The module IP block wizard will appear after that, and you can configure the component based on your preference and the requirement. Some parameter in the IP are optional, such as the initialize the memory option in the system memory. These options allows the RISC five to download instruction from the system memory upon power on reset. After changing a setting, you must always regenerate the component to reflect the updated setting in the RTR. Here is one of the very important features in the Propel Builder, which is the IP Packager. This IP Packager, it allows you to create and deploy the custom IP. The IP Packager is a GUI tool available in both the Radiant and the Propel Builder. It allows you to pack a customized IP directly, and you will be able to edit port, files, parameter, and also the memory setting with it. It's a very convenient tool that enable custom IP creation without any know-how on the latest IP package XML format. It also support the custom parameter definition, Python script integration, constraint file inclusion, and also the intro HTML creation. You can actually launch the IP packager from the Propel Builder by selling it from the two tabs. Then choose your project directory and create a new folder called a demo IP or any desired name that you prefer. Your custom IP will be stored in this directory later on. For this training session, we use a seven segment driver as the custom RPL. And this is used for the custom IP packager you will need to define some of the basic information for the custom IP with the following steps. In the IP packager, switch to the metadata tab. Then you populate the VRNV section with the information of this IP vendor, library, name, and version of the IP. All this information is based on your custom IP preference. Then you select what device is supporting this IP. In our case, we choose any devices because uh, the custom IP the custom IP can be used for every device. Then you can include some general information to display in the IP catalog. Lastly, you can also choose the supported software tools such as this custom IP is used in Radiant or only the Propel. So this example create a custom seven segment display IP as you can see in here. 
So we add the custom RTL into the project. After that, the RTL has been added to the project. And now we can actually automatically infer the ports from the RTL by select infer ports from HDL. The ports definition from the custom RTL will be included in here. Then the tools will update the port created from the RTL code into the metadata tab. The IP packager also allow you to create an introduction HTML to describe what your IP is about. This information is in the doc assistant tab and it has the information that you will see during the IP deployment and installation. You can follow this step to create the HTML file. First, switch to the doc assistant tab, then define some basic information in the relevant support fields. Add a new entry to the revision history field, then save it. After you save it, go to the miscellaneous tab to confirm that the HTML file was added. This will be the basic information that will display during your IP deployment. You may preview the IP to ensure that your IP package settings are correct and have no issues. The RTL, ports, metadata info, and also the introduction.html must be added before you're able to preview an IP. IP parameters are value of the various settings that you can choose from to configure the IP default state during the instantiation. So to add a parameter, you must first add parameter tabs and groups in the metadata tab. This parameter tab and groups define the IP block wizard appearance when instantiate an IP. You can add a parameter tab by right click the parameters and select add parameter tab. Likewise, to add a parameter group, right click a parameter tab and select add parameter group. Lastly, you should rename those tab groups and parameter based on your preference by double clicking on them from the parameter list. After the parameter group is created, you can proceed to add parameter for custom IP. You can rename the parameter based on the IP actual property. For example, this demo design creates a simple custom 77 display to display a fixed character, and it can be chosen from the IP wizard. We add in the relevant form info, then preview the IP again to verify the GUI proper property is what you expected in here. Basically, after all the IP packages required field will fill up, you can proceed to package it to be used in the Propel Builder. The final outcome is a new IPK file created in the previous chosen IP packager project directory. Then you will install your custom IP in Propel Builder with this newly created IPK installer file. For the installation part, it's actually very straightforward to install the custom IP. First, in the IP catalog, select the install icon from there. Go through the EULA terms and agreement and agree on that. Then you can start installing the custom IP. After this, the IP will appear in IP on local tab. The naming of the IP is based on the metadata you provide in the IP package previously. So double click on it to instantiate the IP. Provide your desired name, configure the parameter, then generate the custom IP to insert into the Propel Builder schematic view window. After deploy the IP, you have several ways to connect the component. First, you can actually manually drag and drop to connect the source and destination port. You can also run the ticker commands such as the SBP Connect Net. SBP Connect interface to link the source and destination together. And lastly, if you have multiple IP to connect, it's actually very recommended that you leverage the auto connect features to create the recommended connection instead of manually connecting it. You can trigger the auto connect by right click on the selected component or anywhere in the schematic view, then choose auto connect features. 
Propel Builder will provide a recommended connection, and but it's changeable based on your preference. Similar to the component connectivity, there are also multiple ways to create ports. Ports are meant for exporting the signal to the top level RTR or assigned to the physical pin. There are three ways to create ports. You can manually define ports in the schematic view by right click on component and choose create ports. Ticker command, SBP add port is another spotted method. But out of the three ways, the recommended way is to use the auto export features where you can right click on the component, export, and it will automatically create all ports in the component and that will save you a lot of time. Each of the peripheral has its own address range for a RISC V processor to access. The Propel Builder will auto assign the component base address in a continuous matter. System memory that connect the RISC V data instruction will always start from base address zero to align with the hard coded reset vector. You can manually reassign and lock this base address. If auto assign address is triggered, this lock base address will remain and stay the same. The minimum address range is 1k and end address is automatically calculated by the Propel Builder. So once you have your SOC system finalized in the schematic view, you should save your project, then use the auto assign features to assign your base address, validate the design functionality with the design rules check, then generate the SOC RTL. This SOC RTL will then be integrated with the rest of the IP in Radiant Design Project. In the next section, I'll share the FPGA implementation flow in Radiant. You can launch Radiant from Propel Builder or Propel SDK. You simply click on the Radiant icon from both tools and trigger the ticker scripting to launch and generate the Radiant project automatically. The Radio FPGA project it consists of the Propel Builder generated SOC file system as well as the settings from the development board template if a supported board is chosen. Run the synthesis engine to generate the netlist for next step, which is the pin assignment. For this demo, we leverage the Lattice Mac X05 and Next development board. You'll need to connect both the USB serial port. One is for the FPGA configuration and also to run the RISC V software debugger. Another port is for use to run the serial UART terminal print up. Most Lattice low power FPGA boards can be powered up with the USB port alone. In this case, we do not need the external power supply. Next. We will perform the port mapping to the physical pin placement with the device constraint editor. You can launch by clicking the icon in Radiant user interface. The device constraint editor will list out all ports that can be connected to the physical pins. You can assign the pin location, choose the I.O. type, define pull up and other I.O. settings here. This table in the slide, it shows the pin placement reference for this demo, which is for the X05 port. This info is available in the respective de development board user guide, where you can find in the Lattice website. After you assign all the pins, you can save the PDC pin up file. Radian will translate the device constraint editor IO pin setting information into the proper command and write into the PTC file, which you can view and edit accordingly later. Then you add the device constraint file to Radian project post synthesis constraint file section. Once all of this is done, click on the export file. Radio will go through the mapping, place and route process to generate the FPGA bitstream. After the FPGA bitstream file is generated, you can then launch the programmer, add the bitstream file, 
configure the programmer for SRAM fast configuration, then start configure the FPGA. You should observe the programmer output console to check for any error message. Programmer status pass indicate the FPGA configuration was successful. After this, you should save your XCF into a project file. The SCF is added to the programming file section and the setting is recorded for next launch. In the next session, I'll do a quick demo for the hardware design flow. Alright, for this section, I'm going to demo on how you can create a SOC project. Then I'll walk through the Propel Builder, how you can create a custom IP packager. Then I'll briefly talk about the interconnect address mapping, how you create a custom IP, do the memory initialization, then walk through the Radiant FPGA pro project as well. So to create a new Lattice SOC design project, simply click on this, create a new Lattice SOC design project tab. The create SOC project GUI will pop up. Then you can put in your project name. We will use the default location, which is the same as our workspace. For the processor, we will use the RISC-5 MC, but we will choose a uh, Mac X05 family, which is the board I'm using right now. The device information will be the same as the dev kit user guide. So we will need to match accordingly from there. So once we put out all the settings, right, we can choose the template. Then click finish. So, as you can see in here, it will create a hardware SOC project in the Propel SDK environment where you can actually view and see the settings from here. And in here, you can launch the Propel Builder from the Propel SDK. So simply click on the hardware SOC project, then you can launch the Propel Builder from here. So after the Propel Builder is launched, it will automatically create the Hello World template for you. So in here, you can see that the basic peripheral such as the CPU, system memory, GPIO, and the UI is already made available in here. We have the basic inter, uh, interconnect for the AHPL and also the APB. All of these are automatic connected. And in here, right, we can create uh, some of the custom IP. So to create a custom IP, you can go to Tools, IP Packager. For the interest of time, I have already created a custom IP, so we'll just open the IP directory instead of creating it. But I'm going to go, going to go through the explanation for that. So in the IP packager, as you can see in here, we have in the metadata tab, we define the IP name as a seven segment driver and it can be used for any device. In the category, we are putting it as a custom IP with the display name as a seven segment display driver. It can be used in the Radian version 2023.1 and above, and it only support the proper IP. In the design file, we have uh, added the, the RTL. Seven segment top. And then we have the test miscellaneous, uh, also the dot assistant over here, where we actually add the title description and the device supported for the revision IP, where after you add the information into the IP packager, it will actually appear in the miscellaneous uh, section as an introduction.html. 
So this is actually the HTML file that shows you the information of the IP. So once you have all these uh, inserted, right, you should go to the metadata. And usually you should need to import prop the HDL. You will actually get the port information from the IP and display it in here. So you can see that input output pin is the same as your IP parameters. Then in the IP parameter, you will need to include the property for your custom IP. So in here, the title of the parameter is actually the number of character to print. We have it fixed as a character to print out on the seven segment display because this is just a simple IP demo. So the value type is integer and we have the default value as 11, but user can actually choose the option to choose uh, either you want six, one, six or 11. Then you can actually do a preview of the IP to see how is the configuration of your custom IP. Once you click the preview, your IP packaging will come up. And as you can see in here, right, the title of the group one is here, but the number of the character to print is the one that you mentioned just now as the property. Then you have the value, which is the character that you, you, you can choose from. And this is all are the information that you actually put inside the characters to print property over here. So once you click the generate package, uh, the package IP button, right? It will actually generate an IPK installation file where you can install on your IP on local. I'm going to show you how you, do, you, you can do that. Okay. So in here, in the IP on local, you can choose install a user IP. So we already have the package created in here. which is the 7 segment 1.0 IPK. Accept the agreement. Then you can see that the 7 segment display driver has been installed and appeared in here. How you would instantiate the IP in your design is very simple. Just double click on it. Then it will ask you to put a component name. Click next. You will go into the IP configuration tab. Choose any of that. Then generate. The instance will be automatically added into your project. How you connect the ports? There's many ways, but the easiest way is to right click. Then you can choose the auto connect. There will be several connected connection comes up with some recommendation. You can choose how your connection would like uh, typically is, and you can modify it from here. So I'll use the default settings. As you can see, the clock and the reset has been automatic collect. For the 77 up, this one is connected to a conduit. So we will need to create a port for it. The easiest way is to right click and then choose create ports, or you can just use the export, which is auto create ports features. It will create a ports for you if after you choose that, but the name is based on the instance name with the output direction. And you want, you would like to, you will want to change that. How you edit a name or IP from the schematic view is to click on the ports, then you can go to the design view. In the design view, you can change the features or parameters or naming of a certain IP. So in here, I'll change the name of this into Evan Tech. And as you can see, the name has been changed. Likewise, if you like to actually com configure some of the IPs in here, right? Such as the system memory, initialization memory, you just double click on it. The IP parameter will pop up.
And then in here, I'll choose initialize memory. Then I can choose a initialization file if required, then just click on the generate. After you finish your basic design of your Propel Builder, you should go to the auto assign tab. In here, it will auto assign the address for you. So if you look at the address range, it will be a continuous manner where you can see that the CPU will actually fetch the instruction from the reset vector, which is a 0x0. So this will always be the system memory instance. Then it will, it will automatically put the next peripheral for the risk file to access in the next address range and likewise the third peripheral and so on. So you can always use the auto assign to do this. After that, you can validate your design with the DRC features. Then you will finally generate the SOC RTL. And as you can see, all of this will take a few seconds because the Propel Builder is actually a very lightweight design tools and it can generate your system very, very fast, which saves you a lot of time. Once this is done, you can click on the Radian to run to open a Radian project. The Radian project will be automatically created and it will include all the files from your SOC projects there, as you can see in here. So what you need to do is to synthesize your design, then just create pins and point to that. So for the interest of time, I have already created a project where we can save the compilation times. So let me show you. So this is the project that has been created from there. And from here, right, if we go to the device constraint editor, we have already included the required pin into the constraint editor, as you can see in here. So we have the seven segment reset and also the UR pin assigned accordingly to the pin assignment described in the X05 development kit user guide. So after this, you should save it and all this will be reflected into a PDC file, which is the pin connection file. If you double click on the pin connection file, you'll find that all the description in the device constraint editor is actually reflected in here as the command. So you can actually do both ways. You can, if you know the command, you can actually use the command to create the pin connection instead of going to the GUI. It's really based on how, which preference that you would like to use. After all this is done, you should click on the export file and it will run through the whole process and generate the big screen for you. So once all of this is done, right, you should open the programmer. You can run the programmer by using the icon over here or you can go to tools, programmer. It will launch the programmer settings as, as listed in here. You can use the detect table to detect your USB connection and choose the proper port for the FPGA configuration. Then choose the fast configuration, which is the SRAM configuration. Select your bit file. Then you can start the configuration process by clicking on the program device. Once the programming is done, please check the status. If the data indicate pass with no error message and the operation shows successful in the output console, this means that your configuration is successful and you should observe LED started on your dev kit and then the, uh, the done bit on your dev kit, done LED on your dev kit has been light on. 
basically this is the whole soft hardware design flow and now i'm going to proceed for the next session the next session will go through using the lattice propel sdk to develop the risc 5 software application in the propel sdk you can create a new software application project by choosing the lattice c c++ project if you launch your propel sdk from the propel builder instead the application project will be automatically created during the deployment The system environment and the BSP package file is reside within the SGE folder and is generated by the Propel Builder. These are the hardware handoff file that is required by the Propel SDK to create your software application project. In this demo, keep the default system environment, define your preference project name, then go to next. In the toolchain window, keep the default setting where Picolib is selected. Picolib is chosen for its lightweight C library and is meant for small size embedded system, which is very suitable for lattice low power FPGA application. The newly created application project is based on your preference theme and it will be added into the project explorer. You can then customize the main.c to fit your application code. So in this demo, we added in additional debug printf code to perform some simple demonstration later. After you customize the main.c code, you can then build your software application project. Simply right click on your project, then select the build project. After the build is successful, two software executable files are generated. The MEM file is used for system memory initialization where the RISC-V processor will boot and fetch the instruction from the system memory once the FPGA is configured. For the L file, on the other hand, it's used for the on-chip debugging, where BitStream is loaded through the SRAM. The L file, on the other hand, is used for the on-chip debugging, where BitStream is loaded to SRAM through the open OCD debugger. Next. We are going to talk about how to use the Propel SDK on chip debugger to download and debug your software application. Prior to starting a debug session, configure and connect to a serial terminal first, which is meant to print out the debug message from the UART. This can be easily achieved by choosing the terminal tab, then you configure the terminal settings from there. After you click on the terminal tab, a launch terminal pop-up window will appear. Choose the serial terminal settings and configure it accordingly. You can detect your COM port with the device manager. Make sure you choose the correct COM port number, then set the bug rate to the 115200. Next, launch the debug configuration from the Project Explorer. Simply right-click on your software application project, then run debug configuration. Choose the GDB Open OCD debugging to create a new debug configuration. By default, the correct software executable file will be selected. In the cable connection tab, you may need to verify your USB cable connection to make sure that you detect the correct JTAG change and device from there. A debug session will be created after you click on the debug button. Then a pop-up window will appear for you to switch to the debug perspective. After the debug session has started, the main thread will post at the first executable line of the, of the code until you run the next step. In the debugger console, you can start, stop, step through the code, and even set breakpoint and view various debug features available in the Eclipse environment in your debug section. When you step through your program, you should observe the LED switching on off as well as the printout of the newly added debug code in the terminal console. The Lattice Propel SDK is based on Eclipse IDE and it came with the various debug features such as the global variables view, we have the register view, memory browser, debugger console, backpoint, and etc. 
All these debug features, they provide a different function and debug perspective to add in your software debug and development. Lastly, we will visit the ECO editor features in the Radiant software. A typical memory initialized features allow you to insert the memory file into the system memory and during compilation, the FPGA will initialize the system memory with the provided content. The ECO editor, it allows you to inject the RISC-5 software executable mem file without the need to recompile the whole FPGA project. With ECO editor memory injection features, you are only required to regenerate the bitstream but not run through the whole synthesized place and route process again. As stated previously, the ECO editor provides a quick access to adjust your project I.O. settings, PLL parameters, and memory initialization without having to recompile the whole RTL. You can launch the ECO editor from Radiant two-step or click on the ECO editor icon. To initialize the memory file, you should select the memory initialization tab within the ECO editor window. Choose the hex file format, then select generate mem file from proper SDK. You will also need to make sure that you turn on the memory initialized features in the system memory to do this. Before you save the settings, make sure you run the design rules check to verify there is no error. Then, click Save to reflect the new memory file initialized content. You should notice that once you click on the Save button, the export file stage will change to the blue color play icon, but the rest stages are shown as complete after you add the new memory file with the ECO editor. This indicates that the previous place and route process does not require recompilation, and you only need to regenerate the screen with the export file tab. Now, after the new bitstream is generated, you can run the programmer again with the previously saved XCF file, which is your project file, and you will retain the existing programmer settings. Then, configure your Mac XO5 port with the updated bitstream, and you should observe the FPGA boot with the LED switching on off and the terminal printout debug message, which is the same as the debug session you had previously. Now, I'll continue with the software build flow demo. For the software design flow, we go back to the Lattice Propel software again. So in here, we will create our software development project. So right click on it, go to new project, then choose Lattice Propel C, C++ project. Go to next. Because we are using the same workspace, it will automatically choose the system environment file from the SGE folder. Then you just need to create a project name. But in here, I'll use the software SOC to differentiate the hardware and the software. Go to Next. Maintain the default setting. Choose the Picolips, which is a lightweight library. Then click Finish. Okay. Your software SOC project will be created. You can go to the main.c, which is the code that, which is the main code. And in here, we will do a simple modification. Copy the printf, and we will put it in here, in the looping, and then we change it to debug hello. After that, right click and build the project. So once this is done, you will notice that there will be two files created, which is the main file and also the L file. The L file is used for the SRAM uh, direct download to the SRAM, which is used for this open OCD debugger session, where the main file is used for mem init system memory, where the RISC file will actually boot from the system memory during the app upon the FPGA configuration. Now, we will demonstrate how you can run a debugger session. 
right click on your project then we'll choose debug as debug configuration then in here make sure that your cable connection able to detect your project settings then you can start your debugging session After the, the debugger session start, it will ask you to switch to the debug perspective. Then you can see that the code will stop at the first line of your executable code. Then in the terminal, we will set up. Com4 is the one that used for the UART for my testing. So once you click the resume, it will start printing the code. And then as you can see, I have put several breakpoints in here. So we actually stop in here. So if I remove the breakpoint and continue to press, it will continue to run the debug code in the looping. And you can post it or you can put more breakpoint to debug on your code. There are several debug features where you can see in here is that in the variable, we have the variable view where when you step into certain code, it will show you what's the vari variable value is about. You can also set different breakpoint in here. And in the breakpoint view, you can turn on and turn off them accordingly. And also we have different type of expression view, peripheral, inserts, their address. And most importantly, we have the memory view where you can actually check the different memory address range, what is the value that is included in that. So for example, if I like to monitor the 8,000 view of the address, you can just simply put it in. Then you can see that the address, the data in the address range will be shown in the memory view window. You can check there is more different type of the view or the debug features where you can actually get it from the Windows show view uh, tab here. So basically this is the, the whole debug perspective for this uh, Eclipse IDE. And now I'm going to show you how you can actually inject the map file into the uh, into the system memory by using the ECO editor. So I'm going to stop this debugging session and we are going to Radian. So previously we have generated the the bitstream from the by compiling the whole project, but then now we wanted to include the memory uh, the mem file into the system memory including into this bit strip. So how we're going to do this is to go to the tools then we go into the ECO editor. In the ECO editor, choose the memory initialization. Then you go to the memory initialization over here. You can choose your memory file. The file format has to be in the hex format. Then go to your memory file. In the debug, choose the man file. Use the DRC, which is a design root check, to make sure that there's no error. Once it's passed, then you can save. After this is saved, right? As you can see, all the rest of the stages are shown as complete except the export file. And then you can just rerun the export file to create a new bitstream which included the newly generated software memory.
Okay, once the file is generated, we can do the download again. And in this time, we can choose the newly generated file, which it is. Then we can reprogram it. Upon configuration success, you should notice that the Propel demo, sorry, the Propel, the Lattice Propel SDK, the terminal, even though we are not running the debugger, but the terminal session will continue to print out the debug hollow, which is the looping that we have created in the existing code. And this shows that the memory initialization using the ECO editor is successful. Basically, that's the demo for this uh, software development flow. So, in summary, Lattice Propel development suits provide you with a design environment that is very intuitive, powerful, and yet easy to use. The lightweight software tools allow you to create and develop and compile SOC project in a minute's time. And bundled with the Propel software tools, Lattice also offers its RISC-V processor course, which adopt open source RISC V ISA. It enables the portability and also the easy adaptation of performance or data across the different platform. And lastly, Lattice Solution Stack and its wide range. <coughs> and lastly, Lattice Solution Stack and its wide range diverse resources is available now to help you to develop your current and also the next generation solutions. Before I end my presentation, here is some of the document reference link, training materials, and also the training videos that you may find useful for this training session. With that, this is the end of my presentation, and now we are at the Q&A session. Feel free to drop your question in the Q&A widget. Okay, so I see there is a few questions in the widget. Okay, for the first question, we have this, why the Propel Builder and the SDK is not integrated into Radian or the Diamond software tools? This is actually a very subjective question. But if we look at the advantage of having it uh, standalone, the Propel development suit itself, right, is a standalone and it has a very lightweight program, consume less resource and able to generate the RTL in the seconds. And for the lightweight, it does not mean that it has less features, but in fact, the Propel development suit is very powerful, easy to use, and it provides the various project template to help you to create a SOC system easily. And in fact, right, you can actually launch the Radiant Diamond or the Propel SDK easily from the Propel Builder taskbar as well. So, and it will automatically generate the project to you, for you. So I don't see it as a disadvantageous, but in fact, it actually gives you more advantages than that. So I hope this is uh, able to answer your questions. For the second question, it's more on the create the SOC project. I had the question over here is that I see you can create the SOC project from the Propel Builder or the SDK. So which is the preferred way? Mm. So I would say that this is actually very user dependent. It's based on user preference. Let this does not restrict that but it gives you the flexibility to create the project for both the Propel Builder or from the SDK tools. The SDK tools, however, it gives you a better perspective to manage the, both the hardware and the software project in a single environment project explorer view. But again, Lattice does not restrict you, so you can actually have it both ways. For the third question, as you know that the Lattice FPGA are more to the low power and has limited internal RAM to fit in a complex software program size. 
So do you have a plan to support external memory through bootloader? Uh, okay, this is actually a very good question. So uh, we do know that Lattice is a, a lower power FPGA devices. And of course, there's ongoing evaluation and the development plan to expand the Lattice and better IP portfolio to meet the broader market requirement. And for sure, external memory support is part of the plan and it's under development. You should anticipate to see more proper IP support in coming release. Okay, so uh, we have the last question over here. So if I update my SOC system in the Propel Builder, will the changes be reflected to the Radian and the Propel SDK? Oh, okay. Yes. So if you add the new IP and regenerate your Propel Builder project, right? So once you relaunch your Radian, or if you're using a Diamond project from the Propel Builder, right? Those updated RTL file or the settings will be reflected automatically through the ticker script, but you have to relaunch it. However, for the Propel SDK software project, right, it's not done automatically. You can update your BSP setting by right click on your software project, then choose update Lattice C, C++ project from there. So after that, you should rebuild your project and then all the setting will be reflected and then you will have your software project uh, executable be updated as well from there. So I see that's the, all the questions that I have. If there's no further question, then I'll end my presentation over here. Thanks again for joining this training section and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.